we're going to look in this video at how we can calculate the probability of a compound event. There are several different types of compound events, and to help us define them and understand what they mean, I have this table of males and females that I interviewed, and I organized them whether they were tall or short in this table, including the totals. Now, a special compound event would be the AND, where we want both to occur together. An example of an AND would be if I'm looking for a male and a short person. If I want a male and a short person, we're looking at where they both overlap, where they both occur together. And what you see is there's only 12 out of the 57 people that are both male and short. So I can calculate that 12 out of 57 to get a decimal, we'll round to four digits, and get 0 0.2105. A second compound event would be the OR, where we want either one of the events to occur or both. Here, when I'm saying male or short, I'm interested in all the males or all the short people or both of them. Well, that both of them is in both the row and the column, so it's actually been counted twice. So when we add this together, we've got the 28 short people plus the 27 males, and we subtract off the 12 short people who are also male that have been counted twice, and then we can divide by the 57 total. Well, doing that on the calculator, we've got 28 plus 27 minus 12 is 43 out of 57. And when I divide by 57, my probability is 0.7544. Now, a third type of probability is what's called the given probability. Here, we only consider the results that are given to us. Given comes after the vertical bar. So this first question is asking for the probability of a male, given I know they're short, which means we're only going to look at the short column. Now, we reduce the total from 57 down to 28. We're only looking out of the 28 short people, how many of them are male. Of the short people, only 12 out of 28 are 0.4286. Is the probability someone is male given they're short? Now, this is a little different than if I switch the order. If I switch the order and ask for a short person given they're male, now I'm only looking at the males. Now my sample size has shrunk down to 27, which means there still are 12 short people, but I'm only dividing by the 27 males because we've shrunk our sample size using the given information. So 12 out of 27 gives us a probability of 0.4444. And it's important to note those probabilities are different than each other switching what's given to us. We're going to come back in a minute and make formalized equations for both of these uh, compound probabilities. But first, let's look at some special relationships that help us out when they apply. The first is independent events. Two events are independent if one occurring or not occurring has absolutely no impact on the probability the other event occurs. In other words, the probability of A given B if B has no influence on A, is just the probability of A. Or the probability of A given B did not occur, we have B's complement. Still, no impact on A, probability of A stands alone because they're independent. One does not impact the other. The other special relationship we need to be aware of is mutually exclusive events. These are events that cannot occur at the same time. For example, I cannot be in my car at the same time that I am riding my bicycle. I can't be in both places at once. Those are mutually exclusive events. So we'll say the probability of both occurring, A and B, is 0. Or the probability of one of them occurring, given the other one occurred, is also 0 because we can't have both. So if one occurred, the other cannot. 
All right, now we're ready to get into the formulas we use to calculate these compound probabilities. The first formula is the probability of both occurring, the AND. To calculate the AND, we take the probability of one event times the probability of the second event given the first one already occurred. And sometimes that second event changes. Now, if they're independent, that second event's probability doesn't change. And we can just multiply the individual pieces, the probability of A times the probability of B, if that applies. But if not, we need to make sure that second one is a conditional probability. To calculate an OR, we add the individual pieces together, the probability of A plus the probability of B. And then we have to subtract off where they overlap, because we've double counted that overlap. So we'll subtract the probability of A and B. Now, if they're mutually exclusive, they both can't occur at the same time. Then we can drop that last piece and just add the two individual parts. Finally, the given probability, the probability of A given B, to calculate that, we take the probability of both occurring divided by the probability of the given information. That second half goes in the denominator. Let's try an example. Let's say a jar contains three green balls, two blue balls, and one red ball. You're going to draw two balls out without replacement. We want to know what's the probability we get a blue on the first draw and a red on the second draw. Because it's an and, we're going to multiply together first the probability of the first piece the probability we get a blue on the first draw. Well, there's two blue balls out of six total balls. And then we multiply by the second one, given the first one's already occurred. That means we got a blue ball, so there's only one blue ball left. And now the total number of balls is five, because one has already been drawn out. The probability that one's red is one out of five. So for our final probability, we get 2 out of 30, multiplying across. Or as a decimal, 2 out of 30 is 0 0.0667. How about another one? What's the probability we get a green on the second draw, given we got a green on the first draw? Well, the probability of both, first, a green on the first draw, would be 3 out of 6, times the second draw. Remember, we took one green out, which means there's only two greens left out of 5. So that's the probability of both divided by the probability of the given information. Given to us is we got a green on the first draw. A green on the first draw, the probability there is 3 out of 6. And when we multiply this all together, we end up with 2 fifths, or 0 0.4. That's how we can use the AND formula or the GIVEN formula. Let's do another example. Let's say a college committee has three graduate students and six undergraduate students. There are four males and five females on the committee, and only one graduate student is male. Lots of pieces here. First, we're going to find the probability we have a female student given that we have a graduate student. Now, with a given probability, we take the probability of both, the probability they're a female and a graduate student. Well, we're told that one graduate student is male, and there's a total of three. So we can infer then that two graduate students are female. So graduate students and female, there are two out of, it looks like there's nine people on this committee. Probability of both, two out of nine, divided by the given information. Given to us is that we're just talking about graduate students. So the graduate students, there are three graduate students out of nine. So we have the probability of both, that they're graduate and female, divided by the probability of the given information, that they're just graduate students. That gives us 2 thirds, or 0.6667. How about the probability we have a graduate student and a female? 
Here we multiply the probability of a graduate student times the probability we've got a female given that it's a graduate student. So the probability of a graduate student is 3 out of 9 times the probability that they're female given they're a graduate student. We already know that's 2 thirds. And so what we end up with is 6 out of 27, which is equal to 0.2222, which is also 2 ninths, which is what we figured out kind of manually working through it, that 2 are graduate students and female out of 9. What about the or, the probability they're a graduate student or a female? With the or, we'll add the individual probabilities. And then we'll subtract off the overlap, where we have both of them. So our graduate students is 3 out of 9, plus our female students are 5 out of 9, minus the overlap we just found out was 6 out of 27. So if we do that on our calculator, we end up with 6 out of 9 or 2 thirds, 0.6667. So I hope this video has been helpful to kind of go over some of the probability rules with compound events and helping you as you calculate those probabilities of these compound events.